The eternal question, what is better, Game of Thrones or Lord of the Rings? Well, in today's battle, we'll be finding that out with an epic 10,000 man last stand. Hey, how's it going? My name is Jackie Fish and welcome. So in today's battle, we are using both the Rise of Mordor mod, which is a Lord of the Rings modification, which has just been made live on the workshop. I'll link it down below. And also the Game of Thrones Seven Kingdoms mod, which adds in obviously the Seven Kingdoms of Westeros into the Battle of Attila. And I've merged them bad boys together for this battle so as you can see you might say oh, it's a bit one-sided but towards the game of thrones units well these mods aren't exactly balanced with one another the rise of mordor units are so much stronger than the game of thrones forces so that i've had to give them three whole armies this is also an online battle as well so these are all being controlled by people we're just having to do it live because of the replays being quite crappy um so it should be insane i believe the game of thrones forces have eight and a half thousand soldiers Whereas we as the Gondorians only have just under 2,000. So it's not looking particularly great for us. But you'll see when we do engage just how strong these Gondorian forces are. So if we take a look at some of the notable units for the Game of Thrones armies. We do have uh, the lovely Tywin Lannister here leading his Lannister men forward. I love the custom models for Game of Thrones. They're always so spectacular. Over with the Reach, I believe we have one of the Reach generals. Yeah, we have Belgar, a, high, a high tower right here. I always love the high tower units as well with these bucket helmets. Really, really cool. And then finally, leading house Mandley. I believe we have Wyman Mandley, one of my favorite characters in Game of Thrones. Yeah, he's a little bit too skinny here. <laughs> I will say that, but he's an awesome character in the books for sure. Then for my Gondorian forces, I do have my spearmen. who are going to be holding up this left-hand side. We do have our Citadel Guard, which are going to be my general unit. This guy is going to be really OP and hopefully just keep the enemy at bay constantly. I mean, look at them bad boy shields. The textures are so amazing in both mods. And finally, I have my Imperial gondorian swords it was a shame i couldn't really bring more units in this because like if you'll see but the gondorian units are just so strong compared to the game of thrones ones it's not even close so let's tell these guys to go 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 and let's get this battle underway we're also going to be doing some slow-mo and stuff it should just be intense as we just see all of these armies just collide towards my nice little last stand and we'll get some close-ups as well as they do march forward. We obviously have the House Mandley infantry. I love this fish scale armor and the helmets. Really nice work there. Oh, the artillery already coming in. Trying to snipe my general. Well, I think they'll need it. Definitely. We'll try and stay in as loose a formation as possible so we don't just instantly die. We'll take a look at the Lannister infantry as well as they do make their way forward. We go the Lannister sword infantry. They're the guardsmen, so they're the most elite. Back here, we do have some more spearmen. Very, very true to the TV show. Then finally, the uh, forces of the Reach. We have uh, the forces of Randall Tartali. Yes, of course. For a second, I was like, what is his name again? The Reach Guardsman. Again, these guys look so good. So much like the TV show. It it's amazing. And then finally, the High Tower Infantry back there, which you've already seen. So, yeah, it's going to be a pretty intense battle. Look at everyone just slowly marching towards me. Honestly, do not know who is going to win this. It's going to be one hell of an engagement. Because if they can break my line, they can surround me and do a lot of damage. I mean, we're already taking a lot of missile fire as well. So I might actually go into a bit more of a defensive formation. I mean, honestly, we'll let them, we'll let them shoot me because... We have a very, very strong infantry line. The spearmen are very, very strong. So I'll give them all the advantages. Oh my god. Jeez, the artillery shots breaking up my front line. Reform the line! Uh, do let me know in the comments what you guys think, what what kind of, I guess, type of uh, fantasy you guys prefer. Are you more of a Lord of the Rings guy, or are you more of a Lord of a, uh, or more of a Game of Thrones person? Do let me know in the comments. I'd be very interested to find that one out. Does look like both the battle lines are getting ready to clash. My sword infantry are going to be the front lines as the forces of the Lannisters making their way up. Here we go. The sp uh, spearmen reforming quickly. Oh, you see that guy just get flung over the battle line. That was crazy. That was really, really awesome. Archer fire going in. Lannisters are even bringing pikemen. Oh my god, look at my formation being smashed with artillery. Everyone else coming in. I mean, the high tower of the Reach army, they're taking their time. They're just setting up a few infantrymen first, but... Already you can see my men just fighting bravely. The cavalry charge coming in. I'm going to quickly actually form a shield wall. 
Bomber Shield Wall of oh, a Manly Cavalry trying to break River Battle Line and seemingly doing so. Let's go ahead and dispatch my general over here to help out. So the state might look really dire for me right now, but trust me, these, these men from Rise of Mordor are more than capable. Another artillery volley coming in. Oh my lord, going all Ramsey Bolton on their ass right there. Killing their own men, it doesn't matter as long as they take out my soldiers. So my spearmen fighting hard against the manly front line, the guardsmen. The Lannister Pikes now being pushed up. Now this might be a bit of a problem, honestly. The Lannister Pikes could do a lot of damage to my front line. Let's do some slow-mo just to watch this battle unfold. The slow-mo is actually quite jolty as well. Oh no, there we go. It's fine once again. Hopefully you guys like the music we've got on in the background. That's going to be the Game of Thrones soundtrack for Rise of Mordor. All custom music made for the mod. It's really something else. Very, very impressive. I might actually give the order for my men to push on as well. Because I think they're being a little bit slow here as well. Like actually attacking. So let's just tell them to go forward so they're a bit more aggressive right there. The knight's coming in. But you can just see the strength. How many men have we killed so far? We've almost killed a, almost killed a thousand soldiers and we've lost like 10. It's, it's just crazy. But obviously these mods are never meant to be balanced between one another. They're always supposed to be, you know, they're balanced within internally and that's all that matters. We could also try adding in the Medieval Kingdoms mod into this as well, which would be crazy. So we'd have Game of Thrones, we would have the forces of Lord of the Rings, and also have Medieval units in, so proper like French knights and English longbowmen. If that's a video you guys would like to see, do let me know. And if you just want to see more mod, like more mod battles like this, again, just write it in the comments and drop a like on the video because I would be more than happy to just take these out. Maybe we could try out the Isengard units. Oh my god, the shadows spazzed out there for a second. Completely surrounded. If we take a look here, we can see the entire army is just hectic right now. The Manly forces have committed everything they have right now to this battle in the hopes that they can simply just break the lines of Gondor. But I just don't think it's going to happen. I think the lines of Gondor are going to hold a few casualties going down from the Gondorian side. But even the spearmen are more than capable of taking out these soldiers. And as always, this is never supposed to be like a super competitive match or anything. It's more just a bit of fun to see who does come out on top with these guys. And we did play this like three or four times, I think. Um, so this is probably the closest we probably are going to get it. Uh, you just see the Gondorian spearmen literally just slicing off heads. Where is the dragons? You need a Khaleesi. You need, you need the dragon riders right now to come down and even up this playing field, right? Because without it, the forces of Game of Thrones are struggling. But then again, with, with Lord of the Rings, just bringing the Nazgul. The Nazgul will probably be able to counter the dragons. Now, I, I, I would say that the dragons are probably much stronger than the Nazgul. Um, you know, much bigger. I mean, Valerian the Dreadwood was fucking huge. So, I'm sure he would be able to kill a kill a Nazgul but also like then you just have Sauron turning up and Sauron you know, he's the almighty so you know I doubt the Game of Thrones universe will be able to take on but it's always so silly it's like when people say like oh who would win One Punch Man or Goku well obviously Goku he's like literally the strongest being in the universe and those of you who don't watch anime just have no idea what I'm talking about there whatsoever. So the pikemen are actually doing kind of good. The Lannister is being smart here, using their pikemen, pushing them up and trying to get them in. Oh, we just see that manly soldier though. Sword just piercing up and then his head sliced clean off. Who needs chain mail when you don't have a head? Again, if we just got a nice little glimpse out, how are we doing? Well, we completely broken the, uh, the reach soldiers. I'm going to go aggressive here. Screw sitting around. Let's try and get some action done here. And let's just be aggressive. Let's try and push back their forces. Let's sally out and actually get some action done. Yeah, this, I'm going to open up this gap right here and just be super aggressive. Because as you guys can see, our units are just so broken. But please don't get confused here as well, guys. Like, the Game of Thrones mod, uh, and bo both the Game of Thrones and Rise of Mordor mods are balanced within one another. I wouldn't want you to go away to think that, you know, these mods are just really broken. They're both really good mods within their own right. It's just when you put them together, they're not, you know, balanced whatsoever. So you're going to see stuff like this. But if you're just playing Rise of Mordor, which most people are, you're going to end up seeing, you know, Game of Thrones units doing crazy stuff. Something I was thinking of maybe doing, and let me know if you guys would think this would be a cool idea, is sticking an army of Gondorians up against, I don't know, like 15,000 White Walkers. Do you, would you guys want to see something like that? Let me know, because I think they could easily do it. 
and I think it would make for a really interesting battle. Just having a, you know, a line of Gondorian swords holding that wall, and as the White Walkers just come pouring in it, like relentlessly, I think that'd be so fun to watch. So do just let me know in the comments down below if that is something you guys would be interested in. So now we've broken our formation, we're definitely giving the uh, cavalry of White, you know, Wyman Mandalay a chance to come around my flanks and try and take us out, but honestly, I don't think it's going to, uh, to help them in any way, shape, or form. The Reachmen are actually looking quite nice as well compared to my Gondorians. Obviously, very kind of, kind of quite similar, you know, uniforms and stuff with that nice silver. Heavy armor plate. The Gondorians, though, are a bit more heavily armored. But I guess the Reach had more of a standardized army, more than anything else. Being one of the richest provinces. I mean, I guess, you know, both Gondor and the Reach are, you know, the richest provinces in the regions as well. So they can really use that to their advantage to, to master a lot of men and soldiers. So as you can see, Wyman Mandalay has committed all his forces in an uh, endless attack, even against my Spearmen. And they are all down to like half units right now. You can see their soldiers just simply getting cut to pieces. I mean, you can't say we didn't give the, the Seven Kingdoms a chance to beat the Game of Thrones army. I beat the Lord of the Rings army even, sorry. Because they've definitely put up a mighty fight and they've thrown away lots and lots of men. Also, imagine what it's going to be like when the Orcs come in, because I would say Lord of the Rings obviously has a huge advantage in numbers as well, because just the sheer amount of land mass uh, compared to Westeros. Obviously, all the Orcs as well, you know, there was like, what, like five, there was like half a million Orcs at the Battle um, of Minas Tirith as well, so, you know, they definitely heavily outnumber the warriors of Westeros. Something as well, if you guys don't know, whilst we've just kind of got these armies fighting, is I also have just recently started a Crusader Kings 2 uh, custom house livestream with Lionheart and Haxo multiplayer um, on the Seven Kingdoms of CK2. So if there's something you're interested in, make sure to go follow me on Twitch. The link should be in the description or just on my YouTube channel. Um, and just come hang out. You know, Make sure to hit that follow button. It's a lot of fun. We're rising from lords, the lowliest lords, to be kings of Westeros, hopefully. Um, so yeah, make sure to come check that out. But anyway, enough of that. Let's go back up to normal speed now. Continue to watch this battle unfold. Uh, Wyman Mandley has unfortunately, I think, been about to meet his end against my swordsman. This is only Gondor Militia as well, and we're cutting down heavy knights. Let's see, Wyman Mandley all the way at the back. One of the things I love about Wyman Man Mandley in the book, I love his speech when he's talking to uh, Lord Davis. Uh, Lord Davis. <laughs> I've been playing too much Kingdom Come. Uh, Lord Davis, and he's like... Um, the North remembers Master Davos. The North remembers remembers when he's talking about his niece or his daughter. It's just such a cool. You know, he's talking about how he's like, you know, always being watched by the Lannisters, never has a moment of time. It's just such an awesome speech, you know. Uh, my men aren't even exhausted. The the Wyman Mandley forces of, of, of House Mandley are so tired compared to my army. And we are just holding in. Maybe we could do some ambush battles as well with this setup. There is still a decent amount of cavalry left though, in fairness. The hammer and anvil is just not working out. Randall Tarly right here. Charging down the heavy knights, trying to break the lines of the Gondor militia. Unfortunately, not doing too well. So even if Gondor militia can beat out the heavy knights, you know that's never going to be a good sign. Drawing their best to surround this unit of Gondorian swords. They will fight their way out. They have they have they've spent their time fighting in the tunnels of Mordor. Slaughtering orcs on a daily basis. These guys are veteran. And I mean their armor does look superior, but I mean in a world where you do have like elf you know elf craftsmanship and stuff. Is understandable. And I, I, I guess I would say Minas Tirith as well is like the much superior city. You know, it's literally, you know, it was a seven, eight walled city carved into the mountain. Now, granted, there's some pretty spectating, there's some pretty spectacular uh, fortresses in Game of Thrones. However, I don't think any of them do match up to Minas Tirith. I mean, a lot of the other ones do probably beat back the majority, like, you know, like Castle Rock and, you know, uh, Winterfell, High Garden, you know, they're all pretty spectacular, but I don't think any of them do beat Minas Tirith. Now, they probably do beat, you know, stuff like Enderus and Helm's Deep. You know, Helm's Deep is a very good fortress, but, you know, it's nothing too crazy. 
with like the Black Gate. You know, Game of Thrones definitely wins in quantity of awesome fortresses. But I think Game of Thrones, I mean, I think Lord of the Rings wins in, you know, just you know, the best one out of all of them. Because with a proper army behind it, I think, you know, Minas Tirith would be impossible to take. But I think it's time to go ahead and close off this left flank right now. Send the soldiers round and completely surround House Manly. Nice, we've killed their general. Yeah, let's just go full, full, full on the aggression right now. Try and finish them off. Doesn't like the Lannisters are going to be putting up the best fight out of everyone, though. The Roots are about to be slain. We'll, we'll clean them up now with the last couple of our units. Killing the enemy general is perfect. I think that was uh, the Tarleys. We've gone slow-mo as well just for a little bit. I do really like the look of House Tarly. I think their infantry looks very nice. And I think this was done before they were shown on the TV show. Obviously, the Field of Fires when Daenerys turns up is just amazing. Um, and you obviously get to see a few more Tarly men. Even though it's majority of Lannisters. But you do get to obviously see Randall Tarly and his son in their uniforms. Gondorians just pushing around the right flank. Try and then just collapse him like viciously into the men of Hightower. Come in there, House Manly still having a few men. I mean, honestly, it's going to be interesting to see what House kind of does the best. Whether the Lannisters are going to be you know, able to clean up this battle and, and you know, take the honour home back to Westeros when Gondor sends them back of, you know, the, the most kills against the Gondorians. Because I feel like the, the Lannisters probably will have the best advantage here with their pikemen really coming up big. But obviously the, the Gondorians still just cutting them down. Bit man by man, piece by piece. Breaking through that lance and then finishing them off. I mean, we can send around all of this men now. Yeah, the balance of the barrel now shifting in my favour. Let's send all of these guys down. The last of the Lannisters trying their best to hold firm. But failing quite miserably, honestly. Uh, is Tywin still alive or has Tywin already gone in? No, Tywin is still alive. So he's been a crafty dude letting everyone else throw their lights away first. Definitely a Tywin, but Gondor has no mercy for men like this. Oh, he's cheering. Tywin, Tywin wants battle, but I honestly just don't think it's going to go too well for you. Let's go and zoom in here as we do watch the beautiful Citadel Guard charging down the rest of the Lannister Spears. Moving into position right now, supporting the rest of the Spearmen. Pikemen starting to break. Oh, yeah, we're breaking everything they have to throw at us. Let's keep up the pressure, though. I want to make sure that we don't allow anyone to live if we can help it. The archers still try to do some work. I mean, look at that as well. If we look at the piles of bodies as well formed up here, so many manlies. How many men have we lost as well? We've lost a few. I think if I maybe gave them an entire another, like another player played in this and we gave them an entire another army, they might stand a small chance because they've killed like 500. So I don't know. I think they maybe need a lot more than this. Maybe we had like 20,000 of them up against. Uh, Maybe up against a few men. That's what we're going to do for the the Game of Thrones White Walker versus Gondorian battle. If you guys want to see that, obviously. We will have something like 20,000 White Walkers going up against our Gondorian army. Again, I think that could be a really, really exciting thing. And we'll, we'll make sure we choose like a custom map as well. Maybe there is quite a few wall maps we can do. This is going to be brutal. These are like, these are archers right now. This is Tywin's army. We'll watch Tywin fight to the end. As he does try his best. As his men are just getting cut down apart the sides. How is Tywin going to die? Is he going to be decapitated? Is he going to be sent to the ground? Is he going to get back up? Oh, he's just looking at that. He's just, no, he gets to get back up. He should have stayed down. Let him know that he is a, he's a you know, lord. Where he's from. from. Maybe he can get a ransom. The Gondorians are surrounding him. Picking him apart right now. Tywin, you don't stand a chance. Oh, he's just going to get his nice little stab underneath the armpit. And he is dead. Tywin has been slain. The rest of the Lannister force, I imagine, will be broken very, very soon. Yeah, they literally don't stand a chance. Gondorians are just having their fill in this battle. And surprisingly, oh, Gregor Kaglane is still in Gregor Kaglane, oh my god, I can't even pronounce it. They were pronouncing it wrong and running with Discord, and it's messed me up a bit. Is Gregor still alive? The mountain. If anyone's able to take out these Gondorians, it is the mountain. I think he might be taken down by now. I can't see his custom model anywhere. Wait, was that him right there? No. Yeah, honestly, I can't see him in battle, so I think he might have already have died. As the rest of the Gondorians just pour in now. And there we go. A heroic victory for Gondor. I mean, that was just almost impossible. I don't think the Game of Thrones army stood a chance 
Uh, but you know, this battle was all for fun and not so much for competitiveness whatsoever. Uh, I don't even know how I would balance it either, right? I mean, look at them kills, man! We've gone to infantry getting 900 kills, 800, 800 there. Um, so, yeah, I think this would be a fun battle. We're going to put, like, 2,000 Gondorians up against 25,000 White Walkers and just see how it will go down. Because uh, each White Walker unit has, like, 250 men in, so we could we could easily do it. 100 units is almost capable of, yeah, so we could definitely do that. Um, and just see. We'll, we'll give all the White Walkers golden experience as well and just let them descend upon the armies of Gondor and see who'll come out on top. Taking a look at the kills of uh, the Westerosian factions, we can see Gregor again getting actually 21 kills. That's not too bad. And the Arch is racking up a few kills as well. House Mandley, Wyman, 41 kills, doing pretty admirably. But look at the rest of the infantry. They literally did nothing whatsoever. Finally, Harry Hobbit's army as well. You can see that Bellor, a uh, high tower, doing okay. Um, and Randall Tarley doing uh, pretty nice as well. 50 kills with them, Hammer and Anvils. Loris Tyrell, 21 kills as well. Didn't actually look at these guys, probably should have. So I think the Lannisters probably did the best with them archer kills. But the reach also might not be too far away. Um, I guess it's just crazy. 800, 900 kills on my Gondorian infantry. So let me know if you guys enjoyed this battle. Let me know if you want to see that White Walker versus uh, Gondorians battle. That could be, I think that would be really exciting. I'll obviously try and make it as lag free as possible as well. Making it an online battle so that people can control their units and nullify that lag. So let me know in the comments what genre you prefer or what kind of fancy universe you prefer. Game of Thrones or Lord of the Rings and why I'd be interested to see that make sure to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed and i'll see you guys in the next one and fish out